All right, let's get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, today's uh, webinar. Mike Ashball will, will be uh, presenting his Managing Electrical Systems Design and Complexity with Solid Edge Portfolio webinar, covering some intriguing topics today. Uh, we ask that you please mute your microphone if it's not already and direct any questions you may have to the Q&A box on the right side of your screen. If you don't see the, the Q&A box, there should be a, a chat uh, show conversation uh, icon in the middle of your screen if you hover over it. Now, without further, further ado, Mike will begin his presentation. Okay, thank you, Tony, and, and welcome, everyone. My name is Mike Ashbaugh, and I do work for Siemens. I'm a member of their Solid Edge business development team, and my focus is on the electrical products. My background is electrical engineering. So here's what I have for you today. Uh, I wanted to begin with some important industry trends. We'll keep that short, but I think that's important to establish that, why we're talking about this topic today. And then I want to introduce you to leading technology that uh, Siemens acquired from Mentor Graphics. And then that's a good segue into the product we're focusing on today, which is the solid edge wiring and harness design. I'll do an overview in the presentation, and then I'll get into the software itself because I'll show you some of the highlights in that software and the flow of that tool. Uh, I'll encourage you to ask the questions in the chat as Tony described. Uh, at the wrap up, I'll just finish up the presentation. However, give you uh, the next steps to reach out to your ProLem uh, team so you can get those quest questions answered and have a further discussion. And I hope everyone's safe in this environment. And I'm coming to you from my home office in the state of Maryland. So I'm really happy to be here with you this today. So industry trends. Um, what's really important to understand is that there's an increasing demand for these smart connected products connecting more and more electronics to everything. And that's conveyed in a recent survey of electrical uh, design teams that do electromechanical products. And they were asked, you know, what's the value that's attributed to your products brought to it by the electronics and electronic systems? And here it said 71% said that that value is increasing as they go from generation to generation of these products. And of that, 37 of them said that this value was increasing significantly. So there's more electronics, but that doesn't come without a price, right? That's making the design engineering teams and collaboration more challenging. So what's the cost and what's the impact of that? So now we see here on the right hand side, right? Here are some of the important parameters that these teams are faced with and businesses with this increased design complexity. They're seeing more pressure on delay to get their products to market, sometimes lost revenue, budget overruns, design inefficiencies with that complexity they see, and sometimes it can affect the quality and introduce more errors. So it's not free, this is compelling, and we think this trend is only going to continue because of the demand for these smart connected products. So electrical systems, right? So the companies, they're recognizing to differentiate their products, they need to be adding these uh, this electronics, more uh, making them smarter, making them unique. And as this design complexity increases, what are the reasons for that? Well, if we look at on the left-hand side, there's a lot of new compliances and regulations that these companies and engineering teams need to follow. Could be in the form of laws or in certain regions of the country, for example, rules, uh, maybe industry standards, new standards for safety, depending on the industry that they're in. And all while they're following these compliances and making sure they follow those re regulations, they also need to be able to show transparently that they're following that. All the while, making sure that those products are meeting the performance, right, both for the electrical system and a mechanical system. So there really is a lot going on there. And for our discussion today, what does that really boil down to? Well, the engineering teams are recognizing that their traditional methods of doing this are no longer working. 
And so we want to introduce the software that's available today and these new methods and how it can help with those challenges. So you're looking at the, some images here of some examples of smart connected products. And these are really a good fit for the solid edge wiring and harness design application. What's common with all of these applications here is they all have harnesses inside the assembly. So there's a series of wires that are grouped together, multiple connectors, and they run throughout these assemblies, connecting these sensors and batteries and monitors and printed circuit boards, anything that they need to actually build this whole assembly and this smart connected product. So there's a lot involved there, and this is an excellent fit for solid edge wiring and harness design. However, there's also other customers that have a use for intelligent wiring diagrams and electrical systems. Here's an example of industrial machinery where there's really not a harness in this type of application. However, there is a lot of electronics in it in this respect for the devices and how they're wired up. We're looking at a control panel uh, right in the middle of the screen here, lots of devices, lots of wires, and we need to be sure that we're connecting it properly and we can follow that. So this too is a good example of where the solid edge wiring design can come in and help manage this complexity. So two very good examples of where this solution uh, fits. Now, where did this software come from? This is an important message here. In 2017, Siemens purchased Mentor Graphics and they uh, acquired lots of technology with that. Uh, the important software for our discussion today is this software called Capital, which is an enterprise level electrical system software to create wire diagrams and wire harnesses and is targeted and has been targeted to the aerospace and the auto industry. So it's industry leading, very mature, time tested. And so it's that software that Siemens has retargeted and leveraged and inserted that in and made it available for the small and medium sized businesses, which would be the solid edge user base. So let's just take a look at that. That software called Capital has been leveraged and is now in this new tool name called Solid Edge Wiring and Harness Design. So remember, the software is not new, the name is new, the software is time tested. So now the small and medium sized businesses have access to this powerful software. The price point uh, to enter is much lower. It's easier to configure and of course easier to implement. A real good fit for those smaller and medium sized businesses. When we talk about solid edge, we're really talking about an entire portfolio. If you look at our portfolio, we uh, organize that into seven pillars. So it's not just the MCAD anymore. And over the last few years, there's been more than 55 products or so added to this portfolio. And where we find this capital software is in the electrical design portfolio. And this is where I spend most of my efforts. So solid edge wiring and harness design is where that capital software landed, now making it available to our solid edge users in a very tightly integrated solution. So before I talk about the new methodology, right, let's just talk about this traditional approach, which is very typical for people and design teams today. If we look at this image, on the right hand side, we see our electrical systems engineer where, where she's capturing her wiring diagram. You can see that on her monitor. And on the left hand side, we have our mechanical colleague uh, working in his, his own application. And in the image, we see this break right down the middle. And that depicts that these two individuals typically work in an isolated environment. They're certainly working with uh, their own software. And so because of that, they don't collaborate very fre frequently, right? And they typically wait till the very end of a design development cycle to come together to see how the pieces fit. And that creates a lot of challenges because at the end of the design cycle, if we have any issues, it's very difficult to figure out what option is best to fix it. And can we even afford to fix it based on the cost and or the impact to the schedule. 
well, this collaboration actually becomes more pronounced if our electrical system application on the right hand side is what we refer to as a drafting tool or a non intelligent application. What that means is that content that's being captured is really just a series of lines and circles and arcs, and it doesn't have any data or intelligence associated with it. So any changes we make are very manually intensive. They're error prone. When we have to generate bill of materials and wireless and things like that to represent the content of our wiring diagram, very tedious. So that's really what we're trying to uh, introduce here with a new methodology to fix those challenges. And a lot of the engineering teams will recognize that this is a challenge with communication. And think of all those complexities that are being asked to manage day to day as these uh, uh, products become more and more sophisticated and com complex. So the better way is the new software. It's going to take those two environments, those two applications, and bring them tightly together so we can get that bi-directional communication so we can communicate from the very start of our project and continue that communication to the very end. Lots of efficiencies help reduce those errors and help us meet those guidelines and the targets, not only performance, right, but the uh, calendar dates as well. So this would be a good time for me to introduce the software modules when we talk about solid edge wiring and harness design. On the left hand side here, this is the environment for our electrical systems engineering team. We have solid edge wiring design on the far left, and this is the application where we build and capture the wiring diagram. We put devices and symbols onto the content area, the schematic, and then we wire them up with wires. And we're pulling this content from an electrical parts library shown there at the top. Solid edge wiring and harness design has a starter library of electrical parts and symbols. And of course, the engineers and the users themselves add their own parts as they uh, expand uh, the more products and, and technologies and things like that. As this wiring diagram is created and generated, we can do circuit simulation right there in wiring design. And we can simulate both the function of the circuit that we've put together. And we can also look at the performance of the size of the wires, the fuse, the voltage, and see if the signal can get to the various components as it's needed to make sure it, it works properly. So it's really powerful right there in this virtual environment for wiring diagrams. The harness design, remember at the beginning, I talked that some customers actually need to take this a step further and build harnesses in their assembly. For those that are doing that, they have access to harness design where the wiring information gets synchronized automatically. So we get the connectivity between those two applications. Now in harness designs, the users there can add the physical components they need so this harness can go uh, be built and manufactured. So they're gonna add insulations, clips, grommets, and I'll take a, a show you a quick look at that in the, the demonstration. So that's for the electrical systems, right? That's the product called solid edge wiring and harness design. Now, where does MCAD come in? Shown on the right hand side, we have our solid edge users. And what I want to point out there is this piece called electrical routing. With that license feature of the solid edge environment, this enables the users to bundle these wires together and then create harnesses and route them through their mechanical assembly, meeting their own constraints and their performance requirements, right? Remember to stay competitive, they're able to do that. It's this electrical routing piece that allows this bi-directional communication. So we can read in the wiring diagramming connectivity into Solid Edge without having to re-enter. Very powerful very efficient with time, right? Creates a lot of value. And that's really the solid edge electrical design. I, I would want to, to, to point out here that on the left-hand side, the solid edge wiring design and harness design, those tools can be run standalone. You do not need to have solid edge, but if you want to do, of course, the collaboration, and that is important in your flow, then of course you'd need both. 
And then you would also need that electrical routing piece, which is the uh, piece that allows this bi-directional communication. But do remember some customers just run wiring designer or wiring diagrams just by itself, and you can do that. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna show in the demo and uh, just a couple more slides uh, before I get to that is like, I'm gonna give you ideas like what we mean by intelligent diagrams. Again, we're comparing that to drafting tools or Visio or PowerPoint or something that the users are using today to describe this electrical connectivity of these devices and the wires. And a big portion of that is the electrical parts library. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. The other thing uh, intelligent diagrams give us is the concept of styling. And what that means is the software can control how the look and feel of our diagrams actually get created. So it doesn't matter who on our team actually creates the wiring diagrams, the look and feel will be the same. And of course that helps with readability and company standards and things like that. Reduces errors, makes it more efficiency, efficient. There's also design rule checks going on as we create these wiring diagrams. And that's really helpful because it's making sure that we haven't violated any electrical type characteristics associated with the, the function of the circuit as well. So it's checking for those things as well. So we're getting a lot of help with this intelligent diagramming application rather than again, a non-intelligent uh, drawing package. And I mentioned too the simulation. So let me just highlight a couple of those just a little bit more and then we'll look at the product itself. So the electrical parts library, there is a starter library that comes with solid edge wiring and harness design. And as of now, the latest release, there's over 4,000 parts and symbols and Siemens continues to add more with each release. And this electrical parts library is where the users will do their component management and putting all the details together. And this is the underpinning of this software, right? This is how we get efficiencies, accuracies, because of the part relationships of the symbols and parts in the library. So for example, we have devices and those devices have associated connectors, right? We know the relationship there. A connector then has cavity information cavities, right? number of cavities, size of the cavities, and then the cavities have relationships with terminals, right? What terminals can go in these cavities and the configurations of that? And then the terminals have relationships with wires. How many wires can go in a given terminal? And if so, what size? So it's that configuration, which gets pretty comprehensive and complex, but that's all identified in the electrical parts library. So we know as we're building our diagram and working with this to create our harness, right? The final output, right? We know that we have the tool kind of checking against this library. So we really want to make sure that we leverage that. Uh, where used in the library and where used in the project. Notice those, those comments there. If you have a component or a part that becomes obsolete or maybe it's a, uh, you know, hard to get or something like that, you can find out which projects and designs are actually using a component. So that's really valuable information when we talk about this concept of a centralized library or an electrical parts library. Very important to understand that with this software. The design rule checks, there's several of them and they come, they're identified into four different categories. Some are just checks on appearance, connectivity, consistency, library consistency, right? We can talk more about those uh, on further calls, but these checks are running in the background as we build up that wiring diagram. And we're seeing an image here at the bottom of the slide where it's indicating some uh, issues that it had. And the blue line, for example, is telling us that the wire that we have specified to go into this particular connector is inconsistent with the library. So as we're, we're, we don't have to wait until we get towards the end of the design or start collaborating with our MCAD team to find out that this is an issue. We know this right up front early so we can make the change, make the adoption, right? And figure out how to fix it. In solid edge wiring design, 
if we select this red text that we see on that blue line, that's a hyperlink that will take us into the actual drawing page and highlight the element that has the issue that we want to correct. So again, you're getting a lot of help as you build this content. A circuit simulation, here we're looking at an image of a circuit, right? I plan to show you this in the demonstration. And the circuit has some devices and we're showing the wires connecting those devices and we've run a simulation. And the green in the wire, for example, wire 131, if you can read that on the screen, it's green and that indicates that current is actually flowing through that wire at this time. And that really depends on the position of these switches of these devices. So in this example, we can actually see, are we getting the right behavior with these switches in this position, right? And we can take that a step further and the image on the right is actually showing us the measurements, how much current is going through this particular wire. And that depends on the size of the wire and the length of the wire. So again, the electrical systems team are looking at these type of parameters because they want to make sure their circuit functions properly and it will also perform properly. And the decisions they're making here at this level can impact the mechanical aspects of the design if it has to do with weight or size and things like that. And being able to communicate that real conveniently uh, with our colleagues is very important. The cyan color here, I didn't mention that, but that's indicating that no current is going through that particular wire. And uh, this is really helpful. You don't have to add uh, anything special to your wiring uh, diagram. Uh, you have the ability to do this simulation. So one final slide here. I like this slide because it allows me to introduce where the data is captured and how is it shared along the suite of tools called the solid edge wiring and harness design. And it also allows me to introduce this concept of this word called connected mode. Connected mode is a term we use at Siemens when we're talking about the bidirectional communication between the electrical system, the wiring diagram, and the solid edge MCAT. Bidirectional, right, push button, and I'll show you that in my product demonstration here in just a little bit. So to start here, what do we show? We're building up the wiring diagram by selecting parts and symbols from the electrical parts library. Notice the black uh, arrow there. And anytime we want to share this wiring connectivity data with MCAD, we can do so with the connected mode. And we do that because we have the solid edge electrical routing piece of the license. It's part of the MCAD license and we can share that information. And now in the MCAD environment, our mechanical engineering team, they don't have to enter in the wire information and how it's connected. They get to read that and now they're ready to go. So what might they do there? They'll take the wiring information, decide how they want to bundle it together and then route it through their assembly Again, following their constraints, their transparency, their safety, everything that they need to follow, right? They're modifying and, and doing their design. And then once they have that done, what, what is of interest to the electrical team? Well, the electrical team wants to know, did you change any lengths of the wires? Because that could affect the electrical performance. So that information can be automatically sent back to the wiring design and we use the terms bridge out and bridge in. So we bridge out when we go from wiring design to MCAD and we bridge in uh, when we go back into wiring design with the wire information. Now for my demonstration today, I want to just focus on this aspect of the complete flow because the focus is really on the intelligence of the solid edge wiring design. But I'm going to complete the picture for those of you that we'll have some interest in harness design, right? So also in the software, solid edge harness design where we can synchronize. That's what that uh, arrow's signifying in the middle. We take the same connectivity information and we synchronize it with harness design. So this harness knows how the what connectors we're using and, and how, how many wires are in there. 
in the harness design application is where we author the new physical pieces of the harness so we can have that manufactured. And the output of that is automatically the PDFs, the wireless, all the other details so we can have that built. One final comment shown on the lower right hand side of our image, connected mode. Some customers like to take the harness information that they now have captured in their MCAD environment and send that directly to Solid Edge. And that's called 2D flattening. So that this uh, feature is enabled through connected mode, right? And you can use that if you wish. So you can see here how the data is captured, how it flows between these individuals and these tools. The concept being that this is simple to perform, it's easy. And because of that, the engineering teams will use this to communicate. Because what we're comparing this to is when we're using non-intelligent applications where we don't have this information. We have to replicate it all the time. We have to recapture it. And then, of course, changes are really time consuming. So people don't want to make changes until the very end, right? Here we've alleviated that. We believe this new methodology is what's going to help as we move forward with those more smart, connected products that our engineering teams are finding. OK, with that, let me go into the uh, product demonstration here. And I'm going to begin with uh, solid edge wiring and harness design. And uh, so what I want to begin with first is just to show you the anatomy of a project. I'll bring up a project, has multiple designs in it, so we can see the content that gets managed and then show you the outputs from that particular project. And then I'll simplify this a little bit. I'll create a new project, a simple little circuit, run a simulation, right? And then maybe I'll show a couple other things. And I want to end with the connected mode, showing how we tie the electrical wiring diagram to Solid Edge MCAD. So let's begin by opening up a project here called Electrical Systems. What I'm looking at at the top left is the name of the project called Electrical Systems. And I see these yellow subfolders, which really represent uh, designs in the project. I can have multiple designs. So I have a design called Analysis, Connected Mode, Door DR, Harness One, et cetera. I even have a design called Wiring. Now these designs could either be a wiring diagram with multiple pages, or it could be a harness design itself. Let me open up the harness design called door D1. I'll just show that to you. And we'll investigate this more together in a follow up webinar. Uh, this is a harness. It's showing all the connectors to the harness. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see the details associated with this connector. This is a connector cavity table. And all this information was driven by the created wiring diagram and a combination of the library. And all this is automatically put in for us. And then finally, there's a wire details at the top. Again, all this information is created for us. So we're ready to go have this built and manufactured. So let me just close that and then we'll go into a wiring diagram example. So let's go down to wiring. I'm going to expand this. In this particular design, which is called wiring, it shows 10 different schematic sheets. I can simply double click one of them and then it brings up the information in the content window. I can use middle mouse wheel to zoom around, which I like to use a lot. A lot of these drawing applications, if they're pretty intelligent, they'll support strokes where I hold down a, a mouse button and I draw a line or something and it executes a command. That's very common in some of these intelligent drawing packages. Once I open this up, point your attention to the design browser area here below the project browser. These subfolders here were automatically created by the software, devices, connectors, inlines, etc. And this is where I can find all the content that's associated with this active design. And I can cross probe. So if I go in here and I select a particular device here, it opens that element up in the design view so I can easily find it. Both in the design view and the drawing itself, 
I can look at the properties associated with that. So we talked about the intelligent drawing application. It has lots of properties associated with what's in these, these drawings, but it doesn't disrupt the drawing. Right, so it's easy to read and we can generate from this the information that we need. So I'll be showing this dialog box a little bit later too. Right now I'm viewing, you see the devices, just a few in here because right now I have the view of this just showing the active schematic. But remember this design has 10 sheets. I can toggle the view down here and said, show me all the devices in the entire design. Nicely organized. And if I can pick something here, it's like, like, where is that? I can use a hotkey to just hit the letter Z and it opens up the schematic sheet work and find that particular device. So a project with lots of content, easy to navigate to get the information that you need. Also want to point out too that uh, the wires, for example. So now we have devices connected by wires. Here's a wire, right mouse button. All the wires have properties. It's a property dialog box where the user would type in the name based on their wiring conventions. Wires have colors, they have materials, circumferences, and they will eventually have library parts. This field is very important here. I'll show this later in my demonstration, but if I wanted to query the electrical parts library, I'd simply select this right here. That would invoke the library, the centralized library, so I can do some queries and find out what part number do I want to assign to this particular wire? The other thing I want to show is this concept of where else can we find this wire? Here we're using off sheet connectors that says this wire with this name can also be found at these other drawings. And in this case, the user or the company, right, they can determine what syntax do they want to use to identify where this goes. The way this is set up right now, it says start with the name of the drawing and then list the component and the terminal we can find it that it's connected to. And if we look at the far end of here, when it says 2-A, for example, that's telling us that's the area within your title block that you're going to find this particular wire. And we can go and navigate to all of these. So if I sit, hit view related items, I can pick one of these. And it'll take me to that location in the drawing. And a lot of customers have drawings that have 30 pages, they could have 300 pages. So the more complex this is, right, the more value it creates. So that's the project, lots of content, but let me just show you these couple of things here. When we wanna generate information, oftentimes, for example, a PDF would be uh, really valuable either field maintenance or perhaps debugging of the system, depending on what type of uh, systems we deliver. Here I can set parameters associated with what the PDF would look like. I can set the scope to the entire project, which includes multiple designs. I can specify just one design or maybe even a diagram. Let me just go with design. The PDF is a very common format, but there are four other formats that are supported. And again, controlling the software for company standards. What's the file naming convention you want to use? We can set all of that in here as well. I'll just go with this and generate this and show you that PDF. In my output window down at the bottom, it tells me the PDF that it generated. Let me bring that up just for convenience. Make this full screen to better see it. And now we see the 10 sheets that we just automatically created that represents our design schematics. And I can view just like I can in the application itself and navigate to those various uh, schematic sheets. What I like about this is very common in a lot of uh, drawing packages is the, the ability to do some searching. So for example, if this is a lot of pages, right? We wanted to know where else can we find this wire without hopping around on the off page references. We could do a find and say, let's paste the name of that wire in there and go find the next one. So this is really 
uh, very common when you have a, a lot of content in a drawing to, to be able to do this. And it doesn't require having a license uh, of the product itself. So you could use this in the field to find that. Let me show you uh, a little bit about some of the tables we can generate and then finally re the reports and then we'll, we'll move on here. So under the drawing, we can look under the tables. We can create tables that have a diagram list, a device list, and a wireless. Let me just pick something real simple. Maybe you want to put this list right on this page or it could be another page. And this is actually a dynamic list. So it has a list of the diagrams we have in our pro design. And if I went in, say, diagram number two, let's edit and we make a change to its name. Let's just call it two. Now we can see in that uh, list, where's my, right there, we can see that automatically updated the name. So we don't have to regenerate these lists. They're tied together, linked together, right? We make the change in one place, the software will do the update for us. So we want to make sure that the content in our drawing matches everything else we have as we connect all these pieces together. And we can do the same thing with the device list and the wire list. OK, and then finally, the workflow. There's a number of reports that are important to users. Out of the box, there's several reports. And if I just pick one of these design wire list, it generates these in HTML format, and we can also save them off in PDF. And if you find a report here that you'd like to change just a little bit, under reports, you can do custom and build your reports there too. So, OK, so that's the project. I wanted to show that quickly to you. So really the, the meat of the tool here, you can see it's quite powerful, it manages a lot of data. Uh, let me close these windows out and I'm going to show you how we quickly create a new project in a new circuit. So under designs, I'll do a new wiring design. I like to use the term my, my design. And we can set the access to the, the project here, read, write. And we can also have it create the first diagram here. I'm going to call this light circuit. And now immediately my design is there called my design and it also created the first page with the proper name and it has the entitled block. So real easy to get that started. Let me talk a little bit about the title block. This can have your uh, company logo in here and other smart properties where you can put in the name of the design, the name of the diagram, it will count sheets for you automatically. So it'll say sheet 33 of 90 or whatever it happens to be. You can have the designer's name in and the date. So you get to set this up as part of the uh, style sets. So it looks and feels how your company wants to do that. So how do we begin? Uh, down here in the design view is where we would actually pick out from the centralized electrical parts library. Here I'm seeing all the libraries that I have access to in my environment, and I'm just going to pick something here real quick. I can navigate this way th through the subfolders. Here's a battery that I want to place down. I can uh, use the filter here. Uh, maybe I want to put down a switch, and now it's going to filter through all those libraries to find the right switch that I might want. It's the one I like to use here. Place that down. Same thing with a lamp. Place that down and then chassis ground, for example. So a way to query and search, right? Find what you need very easily. Put one of those down. I can actually copy this. Just paste it down. OK, and I'll zoom in a little bit with my middle mouse wheel. Now, as we've done that, if I go back to my design view, it's showing me the devices. Notice everything else is blank here, right? But the devices that actually put those in there. Now, when I add wires, for example, add a wire, double click here. The tool is smart enough. It knows that this is a wire, so it gives it a wire name. 
automatically naming the wires. Double click and also route the wires for me. Like if if I want uh, right angle bends in that, I can do that. I can set this so I can run the own own path. But it's very much aware that this is a wire and the behavior of the wire. So as I move this around, it'll follow that nicely for me and keep it uh, nice and organized. Notice in our design browser in the lower left, it actually has the wires in here and I can cross probe as well. One one thing we do here, we want to change the name of this we just double click on that let's just give it names wire one miss my one wire two and over here for example if we forgot you know where we were on the wiring and i put in two notice the red font there is indicating said hey mike you've already used this you need to make it a give it a unique name. So this is one of those examples of the design rule check that's uh, running in the background and working for us. And uh, once we do that, we put our circuit together and you might change the names of this. Maybe we're instead of called it 2200, let's call it a battery. OK, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to do all this. But as we have this circuit put together, we can simply hit this analysis tool and actually run a simulation. And you recall from the presentation, right, the cyan colors indicating that we don't have current going through here. Uh, we have a switch over here. If I hover over the switch, I can see, oh, it's in the open position. Well, that's the proper behavior when it's open. If I close it, right, now I get the green behavior. And of course, this is a pretty simple circuit, but this is the idea that we can work towards that. If I want to look at the measurement of the current that's going through it, I can run a simulation here and get the uh, numerical values for that. Hover over that, and now you're seeing that image I said before where it's measuring the current and the voltage based on the size of the wire. And if you don't, if you haven't put in the size, it'll assume some default wire size for you, which you also get to set that as well. Now, again, this is not very complicated simulation, uh, but it's important to kind of show the concept that you take your same schematic wiring diagram that you created and you're ready to simulate uh, without making any changes that would disrupt the graphics and the visual of that. OK, uh, in interest of time here, I would maybe just show you a little bit about um, some highways and devices. So I'm going to bring this up here. Because what I showed is uh, adding symbols that existed in the electrical parts library. Sometimes you don't, you're waiting for a part, you haven't put it in your library yet. We can use devices here to actually draw a device and then connect up the wires. And this just really helps us with efficiency. So here's a device that we, we have in our drawing. Uh, it would show up over here, right? And we would want to add pins to that, right? So I can do that here, say add pins. And then I can just plunk those pins down automatically. So I know what I, I want to get a device. I want to connect some wires to it. It's a way I can do it real conveniently uh, with, without having the information or a symbol already ready. If I want this symbol a little bit larger, I can just type down here. So it's really flexible for me. And I can also select this and maybe I want to change the shape of this a little bit more. Remember when we're first capturing our drawing, we might not have it all laid out exactly, but we're building this up. Maybe we were missing something. I want to add a wire and I can go right here and double click and add a wire. Really flexible. That's called a device for a large high pin count device. Uh, sometimes people might want to use uh, this control feature here and now it adds all the pins for us automatically. And begin because this is connected to our design view, I can go over here, select those and delete and make those edits as well. Um, a lot of different ways to add wires, right? If I want to add wires from these four, zoom in here to these devices here, I can do that quickly as well. And again, I can move it around. One last thing and I'll, I'm going to move on to the connected mode. Sometimes you the device gets too big and you want to cut it in half for convenience. And 
this application allow us to do that where now I have one physical device, but I've organized it into two logical pieces. And people may want to do this because you may need to stick the second half on a different diagram or different part of your schematic. Again, some very nice, helpful features in here. OK, with that, I want to spend a little time on the connected mode and then we'll get back in the presentation. So let me just uh, close that. And again, I'll encourage you, right? We This can be the beginning of a further demo, so you'll be able to reach out to your ProLim team. I'll let them know what, what you like as a follow up. But let me show you the connected mode. So I have a simple wiring diagram here. And if I look at the properties, this is just two connectors. The library name for that is plug 14. That's important that you remember that, right? So it has a library part name, plug 14. And the instance is P1. This one is the same part, but it has an instance P2. And all we've done here is connected these connectors with 14 wires. The wire names are the numbers 101, 102, 103 and I display the length. Each wire is 150 millimeters long. And if I want to take this information now and send it to the MCAD team, that's what we would use the connected mode for. So what I'm gonna do here is do a split screen here. So my image will get a little bit smaller, but I'll zoom in when I can to show you uh, what I need to. So on my right is solid edge and I'm going to bring up an assembly that has those two connectors, but no wires. So here's an example, rather than type this in manually, enter in the wires, right? Let's leverage this information over here that our colleagues on the electrical system have put together for us nicely. And we do that with the connected mode. So first on the solid edge side, we say I wanna connect. And then over here on my wiring diagram side, I do the same thing here. And what I'm looking for here where it says connected mode has been established with solid edge. So this is all you have to do to connect that. And what I like to say here is I can do this as long as the, both applications are on the same machine, right? Or if we're on the same network. So you can imagine your uh, mechanical and uh, electrical teams, right? They're on the same net network. They would be able to share this link and connect together just like I'm doing right here. So how, how do we continue with this? Uh, what we need to do is on the wiring diagram side, we need to bridge out and we control what data we send with the bridge out with something called harness attributes. So I select the content of interest, say edit harness attribute, and I give it a unique name because I could have a lot of electrical content, it could be harness one, two, three, whatever name I use, because I'm gonna reference that later when I say I wanna bridge this out, right? And what do you wanna bridge out? That particular harness. And here I get a report, so I hit exit. And then on the mechanical side, under electrical, what I get now is an indication, this icon has turned green. And what that means is we have new electrical data from our colleagues. I can reject this data or I can accept it. So if I click on this, the green color will go away. And now the wizard has launched for me so I can transfer this data over. This message is telling me that you have two components of the same name and I need to determine which one gets mapped to P1 and which one gets mapped to P2. So I'll do that here by assigning an occurrence. And then I'm going to finish the wizard. This is the connectivity that's coming from wiring diagram. The name of the wires, we know what device it's connected to and what terminal. And on the other side, if I remember to tell you, we have connectors here that have the same terminal information. So the MCAD is going to know exactly where how to wire this up when it gets the information. And I'll just show that to you right now. Here's the wires, if I expand that. Look at the wires. And if I look at a connector, I can open up the file and under tools, assign terminals. This is the dialog box that controls how we tell this particular connector here 
where do we find terminal number eight? It's identified by the red. So that's all set up. And this plug also has to have the same name as plug 14. So they have to match in order to make that connection. So I wanted to point that out real quickly here. So what we did right there is we shared the wiring connectivity information with our MCAD colleagues without them having to enter in anything. And what would happen here is maybe we would want to bundle this real quickly and then route it. So we are furthering our design, following our constraints, and then we would want to share that information back to our wiring um, schematic. So these default lengths of 150 will change because of the position of these connectors are most likely not 150. Uh, let me let me just do the bundling real quick. Take 30 seconds to do that. Where I'm going to take these wires and I will put them in a bundle. And I'm going to route them along an existing path shown here. Okay, I'm clicking quickly just to finish this up for you. And now I have the harness run. And because we have the information of the physical size and characteristics of the wires and bundles, I can actually update my display to show that more realistically. And then now the final thing is the bridge. And so look at our information here. We're the electrical team, right? We gave the connectivity to our MCAD team. Let's do a bridge in. And then we're looking for a report, which we can review. And now we can see that what we learned is the actual lengths are closer to 500 millimeters. So what do we do here? We take a look at this. Is this something we can tolerate within our electrical performance constraints? Can we make this work, right? And so what's going on here is this communication, right? Making sure the MCAD team is meeting their constraints. Electrical team, we need to do the same as well. So that's the connected mode. You can see how powerful it is for those companies that want to integrate this together, keep the engineers in their strength, their domain, but the ability to share things and not have to re-enter it communicate early and often and help us with those challenges that we talked about at the beginning of the hour here. OK, let me minimize this and I'll wrap up. The final. Couple slides. OK, you should be seeing my uh, presentation here again. Just some highlights in the demo, so. You know, what I wanted to show you there is that these intelligent tools really help you with managing lots of content in the design and the the ability to work with this electrical parts library that you can add to is very powerful with those relationships. The styling is going to give you the ability to implement your customers uh, drawing stand or your, your company's drawing standards, right? And you can change those and everyone's drawings will look uh, the same with the same formats, etc. The power of the design rule checker built right into solid edge wiring design. Simulation, as a reminder, you can do functional simulation as well as current and voltage if that's helpful for you to meet your constraints. And then a lot of important outputs, tables, lists, and then the, the PDF that you can search and you can use that for debugging or maintenance. So if you like what you see, right, I'd certainly encourage you to reach out to your ProLim team. I'm going to show you the numbers uh, and just uh, who to contact uh, in just a couple slides here. Uh, if you want to try this, you would also reach out to your ProLim team. They can give you access to the software and there's some tutorials that you can work through depending on what it is that you want to study or learn or try out. So please check with them. Um, you can buy um, solid edge wiring and harness design together, right? Or you can actually get a license where you get just one or the other. I've, again, I was focused on the solid edge wiring design for this particular webinar. Uh, the software is actually the same. So whether you have one or both, you're really downloading the same software. But your ability to access these features is contained within your license to just make sure you're clear on that. 
And this is me, and I welcome you to connect with me on LinkedIn. I like to connect with lots of people. Uh, you're always welcome to uh, ask me questions if I can be of service to you. Uh, but please, uh, you know, connect with the ProLim team. And that's really my last slide here. So, Tony, I'm going to invite you to uh, take the helm here and finish up the webinar. Okay, Mike, thank you for that that uh, that webinar. Again, we'd like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Uh, an email link will be uh, sent to you later today, so you can either watch or share that with uh, with other individuals in your in your organizations. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact Mike directly or send us an email to market at prolim.com, which is at the bottom of his last slide here. Uh, so thank you all and have a great day.